a bit of introduction as to what we are going to do today. We are going to discuss certain level one type of questions today. So the questions are not going to be very difficult, but uh, you should be really good at your concepts to be able to solve them quickly. As I have always been saying, when the questions are easy, you got to be quick because others are also going to solve. So we will have a live quiz which is going to go parallel to this uh, discussion. Yeah, everything is sorted now, Trevor. Someone is asking, is everything sorted? If you're able to hear me, if you're able to see me, then everything is sorted. Okay. So uh, yeah, we are going to have a live quiz along with this discussion. So if you're there in the live session, you will be able to take the live quiz along with the discussion. So just click the first link that you see in the description. It will take you to our dashboard where you'll be able to see under live quizzes. There is this live quiz called time and distance live quiz for YouTube session. So please click on that. You can click on start. You won't be able to attempt the questions yet. I haven't started the first question yet, but you can click on start and you know, wait there. So what we'll be doing is we'll be attend we'll be attempting a question there and I mean you will be attempting a question there and you will come back here for the discussion. So we'll be going to and fro between the quiz and the discussion here. So that's going to be the pattern for today's discussion. And uh, the questions as I said are going to be level one and towards then we have some interesting questions in uh, today's discussion. But initially the questions are going to be level one. So you've got to be really quick there and uh, it's highly likely that you might also end up doing some calculation mistakes and all that. So be careful and make sure that you're able to get most of the questions right. If you have gone through all the concepts of time and distance, because today's questions will test you upon almost the entire breadth of time and distance, right from average speed till races, we are going to have questions coming up. So let's see how you guys are going to fare in the quiz. Uh, if you have already reached the page where you can see time and distance live quiz for YouTube session, please type C in the chat box so that I know that you guys have figured out where you're supposed to take the quiz. Perfect. So let's start. I'm going to start the first question in the quiz. So go to the quiz page. I'm starting the first question in the quiz. In the quiz page. The first question is up in the quiz and I'm also going to activate the first question here. So this is the first question. Please try solving this. A simple question to start with. I just wait for the timer here to get over the timer in the video. Okay, the time is up. Let's see the status of the leaderboard after you guys have attempted the first question. Very good. Most of you have got it right. Let's see how we can solve this question. Just a minute. Okay, let's look at this question. Uh, what I will be doing is I will not be explaining things in detail in the first shot. I will try to solve it like I am solving it in the exam for you to know how generally questions are solved in the exam. Otherwise, I, I tend to explain things in detail and students tend to think that that's how it's actually solved in the exam. So it's not how that, I mean, it's not how it's solved in the exam. So first I'm going to solve like I'm solving in the exam. And later, if you want me to explain further, I'll definitely explain with greater detail. Okay. Okay. Let's get rid of the leaderboard before we can uh, go to the question. Thanks for reminding me guys. Okay, let's try to solve this one. A car covers the first 35 kilometers of its journey in 45 minutes and covers the remaining 69 kilometers 
in 75 minutes what is the average speed of the car okay average speed average speed is total distance by total time taken right if the distances are not equal then i don't have a formula for that i can go for total distance by total time taken so average speed is total distance by total time in this case i have got 35 kilometers and 70 sorry 35 kilometers and 69 kilometers so if i add those two i'll get 30 plus 69 and 104 so it's going to be 104 kilometers that's my total distance and total time is 45 minutes plus 75 minutes that's going to be 120 minutes the answer is in terms of kilometer per hour so i have to convert my minutes into hours the numerator is kilometer so there's no issue with that so minutes i'll have to convert into hours so if i divide this by 60 minutes will become hours so that will be two hours so it has to be 52 kilometer per hour so answer for this question has to be option four please type four if everybody is clear with this type d if you want me to explain this at a slightly greater detail i can definitely do that i'm not doing it in the first run otherwise it'll look like i'm going very slow please don't hesitate to ask me to explain in detail i'll definitely do that so if you haven't gone through the basics of time and distance average speed is an important concept so how average speed works is generally how does speed work speed is equal to distance by time but when you have multiple distances and multiple times involved then we discuss about this concept called average speed because you don't have one speed you'll have to find out an average speed for the entire part of the journey that is given by total distance covered by total time taken If the two distances are equal, then we have a formula for it. If the two distances are equal, let's say we're going from point A to point B. Does anybody remember the formula? Let's say this is a distance of D and this is also a distance of D. So if the two distances are equal and let's say the speed here is A and speed here is B, assuming that the units and all are matching, okay, D is in terms of kilometer and A is in terms of kilometer per hour then we can get average speed as 2ab by a plus b okay if the distances are equal if the distances are not equal you always have to go with this formula okay please type one if everybody is clear with the first question perfect let's move to the second question i'm going to the second question in the quiz The second question is up in the quiz. It's also up on your screen here. Okay, the time is up. Let's see what is the status of the leaderboard after you guys have attempted this question. Very good, there is some movement in the leaderboard. Let's see how to solve this one. The speeds of A and B are in the ratio 3 is to 4. They both start from the same place to reach a destination. A takes 20 minutes more than B to reach a destination. Okay, speed ratio is given and the time difference is given. Right, so if speed ratio is there speed of a and b 
isn't the ratio 3 is to 4 then for the same distance I can say time of A by time of B will be the inverse of the speed ratio right so that should be 4 is to 3 and it is given A takes 20 minutes more as per this A takes one unit more and that one unit difference in the ratio is equal to 20 minutes so I can say this 4 units should be 4 into 20 minutes and 3 units should be 3 into 20 minutes. Okay, but what are we supposed to find out? From the, state, from the same starting point, in how much time will A reach a destination that is 3 times as far as the previous destination? Okay, so from the same starting point, if he has to go to a destination that is 3 times as far, so 3 times as far would mean for this particular distance, he took 4 into 20 minutes. So if it is going to be 3 times as far, I just have to multiply this with 3. So that will give me 4 into 60 minutes. And answers are given in terms of hours. So if I convert 4 into 60 minutes in terms of hours, it will become 4 hours. Answer is 4 hours for this question. Please type 1 if you are clear with how we solved this question. Type D if you want me to explain this at a slightly greater detail. The relationship, the relationship between speed and time is when distance is constant, speed will inversely vary with time. So for a constant distance, when you know the speed ratio, you can invert it to get the time ratio. That's what I'm using here. Great. Let's move to the next question. And those of you who joined us a little late, there is a parallel life who is going on in our website, which goes along with this discussion. So please, link, please uh, click the first link that you see in the description. You'll be able to go to the quiz page under upcoming life quizzes. Click the quiz which says time, speed and distance life quiz. And if you're watching the video as a recorded video, once the live session is over, you will still be able to follow along because the questions will keep flashing on the screen. You will just not be able to take the live quiz. Okay. Let's go to the next question. I'm moving to the next question in the live quiz. The next question is up in the quiz. It's also up on your screen here. Time is up. Let us see the status of the leaderboard after you guys have attempted this. Very good. Let's see how we can solve this one. Two cars start at the same time from one point and move along two roads at right angles to each other. Their speeds are 36 km per hour and 40 km per hour respectively. After 15 seconds, the distance between them will be what? Okay. If they're going at right angles to each other, then it should be something like this, right? One is going at 36 km per hour. The other one is going at 48 km per hour. Okay, let's say after one hour, if I want to find out the distance between these two. So after one hour, I'll have to find the distance of the hypotenuse to find out what is the distance between these two, right? In this right angle triangle. And if I look at this, this is 3 into 12. This is 4 into 12. So if I take the Pythagoras triplet 3, 4 and 5, this should be 
5 into 12. Hence, this distance should be 60 kilometers. So after one hour, this person would have gone, the person who's going at 48 kilometers, that person would have traveled 48 kilometers. This person who's going at 36 would have traveled 36 kilometers. And the distance between them will be the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle with 48 and 36 as the two sides, which is 60. Now that is the distance between them after one hour. They are asking for 15 seconds and the answers are in terms of meter. So let's convert this. So this is in one hour. So in one minute, it will be this by 60. That will be the distance in one minute because in one hour, 60 kilometers. So in one minute by 60. In one second, another by 60 I should put. But in 15 seconds, I can multiply this by 15. So that's what we are supposed to do to solve this question. So let's see how we can solve this one. So we will get, let's cancel these things, 60 and 60 will get cancelled. This will become 1 by 4. So basically we are getting 1 by 4th of a kilometer. Answers are in terms of meters. So 1 4th of a kilometer is what? 250 meters. The answer is 250 meters for this question. Type 2 if you are clear with how we got option 2 as answer for this question. Type D at any point of time. Type D if you want to explain, if you want me to explain the question at a slightly greater detail. Okay. Great. Let's move to the next question. The next question is up in the quiz. It's up on your screen here as well. Okay, the time is up. Let us see how we can solve this question. First, let's see the status of the leaderboard. Good. Now, let's see how we can solve the question. A boat takes four hours for traveling downstream from point A to point B and coming back to point A upstream. So the entire two and for a motion, it's taking four hours. Now I don't know what is the breakup. How much time it took for downstream and how much time it took for upstream. Right now, it's not clear. If the velocity of the stream is two kilometer per hour and speed of the boat in still water is four kilometer per hour, that will help me to find out the breakup. Because if I know the speed of the stream and the speed of the boat, I can find out what is the ratio of speed upstream by speed downstream. So speed upstream will be difference of the two speeds, which is two kilometer per hour. Speed downstream will be sum of the two speeds, which is six kilometer per hour. So speed upstream by speed downstream is in the ratio one by three. So time upstream by time downstream will be in the ratio three by one. And it is given that total time taken is four hours. So I can say this three parts is actually three hours. The actual time taken upstream is three hours. Similarly, time taken downstream, I can say it is equal to one hour. Okay. Now, if I know speed upstream and time upstream, I can find out what is the distance upstream, right? So distance is equal to speed upstream into time taken. That should be upstream. 
into time taken for upstream. Okay, so what is speed upstream? Speed upstream is 2 km per hour, which is a difference of these two. So 2 into time upstream we found as 3 km per hour. This is in hours, so there is no problem with the units. So it's going to be 6 kilometers. That is the distance. Answer is 6 for this question. Please type 5 if you are clear with why we are going to option 5 for this question. Perfect. If you want me to explain in detail, please type D. I can explain in a slightly greater detail. See guys, the reason why I'm not going into the concepts in detail is we have a detailed concept section, which discusses each and every concept that is there in this uh, in a particular video from scratch. So we have a very detailed concept session. So some of, most of you must have gone through that. That's why I'm not going through the concepts once again. But in case you want me to you know, refresh the concept for you, you can just tell me type D and I will explain the concept once again. But I don't want to become boring by explaining the concepts once again, which you guys would have already gone through. Okay. That's the reason I'm you know, not explaining the concepts from the scratch for the video. Great. Let's move to the next question. We have some interesting questions coming up. It's going to become slightly difficult as we go forward. I'm going to the next question in the quiz. The next question is up in the quiz. It's up on your screen here as well. Okay, let's see how we can solve this one. Let's first see the status of the leaderboard at the end of this. Good, some of you have answered this correctly. Okay, let's see how we can approach this one. A student rides a bicycle at 8 km per hour and reaches his school 2.5 minutes late. The next day he increases his speed to 10 km per hour and reaches school 5 minutes early. How far is the school from his house? Okay, first I'm going to solve like I'm solving an exam. Then if you want me to express, explain in detail, I will explain. So it is given he increased his speed from 8 km per hour to 10 km per hour. So I can see that there is a one fourth increase in speed. So speed increased by one fourth. If the distance is constant, then the time taken should decrease by one fifth. Now this is something we have discussed under this concept called a product constancy. Okay, when s into t is equal to d, when speed into time is equal to distance, if speed increases by one fourth, time decreases by one fifth. And what is the decrease in time? Earlier, this person was 2.5 minutes late, now 5 minutes early. So, that one fifth decrease in time is equal to 2.5 plus 5 because from late, this person became early. So, 2.5 plus 5, that is 7.5 minutes. So, total time taken should be 7.5 5 minutes into 5. 
this into 5. Those many minutes is the total time taken. At what speed? At this speed. Because that is our initial speed from where, from where we are increasing 1 fourth, right? That is the original speed. So, time is equal to this when speed is equal to 8 kilometer per hour. Now, what is the question? How far is the school from the house? We just have to multiply speed into time. So, distance is equal to 8 kilometer per hour into here. I have got time in terms of minutes. So, I will have to convert that into hours. So, that is 7.5 into 5 by 60. That will convert that in terms of hours so that I can get rid of the hours in the denominator and here. So, I am going to get the answer in terms of kilometers. Okay. Now, let us simplify this. If I simplify this in fourth table, if I cancel, it is going to be 2 times. This is going to be 15 times and I can cancel this 2 and 7.5 which is exactly equal to 15. So, I will end up with 5 kilometers as the distance. So, answer is 5 for this question. Please type 2 if you are clear with how we got 5 as the answer for this question. Perfect. Let us move to the next question. I am going to the next question in the quiz. The next question is up in the quiz. It is up on your screen here as well. Let us see the status of the leaderboard. Great, let us see how we can approach this question. Train A is 175 meter long and crosses a platform of length 35 meters in 12 seconds. So whenever a train is crossing another object which also has its own length, the train has to cover a distance that is equal to sum of the lengths of the train and the object. So, in this case, I can say speed of train A is the total distance it has to cover which is length of the train itself and the object by how much of a time it took. It took 12 seconds. It is in terms of meter and seconds and everything in this question is in terms of meter and seconds. So, it is meter per second. I do not worry about the units here. So, 175 plus 30 by 12 that is going to be 210 by 12 meter per second. Now, how long will train A take to cross Another train, just give me a minute. Okay, how long will train A take to cross train B of length 125 meters coming in the opposite direction? Okay, now there are going to be two objects with defined length and they are also moving. So, time taken for the meeting will be the sum of the lengths of both the trains because both have their own lengths. So, it is going to be 175 plus 125. It is all in terms of meters, so we do not have to worry about the units. 
divided by the relative speed of both the trains. They are coming in opposite direction. So I'll have to take sum of the speeds as relative speeds. And what are the speeds we got? Speed of train A is 210 by 12 and speed of train B is given as 270 by 12. So 210 plus 270, that's 480 by 12. I'm adding 210 by 12 with 270 by 12. So I'll get 480 by 12, which is 40. And what is the numerator becoming? 175 plus 125, that's 200 plus another 100, 300. So 300 by 40 or 30 by 4, so that's going to be 7.5. We are completely dealing in terms of meters and seconds, so answer is going to be in terms of seconds. So 7.5 seconds is the answer for this question. Please type 4 if you're clear with how we got the answer as 7.5 for this question. So there are a few things to be kept in mind whenever you're dealing with the trains question. If a train is crossing a point object, the distance it has to cover is the length of the train itself. Whenever the train is crossing another object which has its own length, then the distance the train has to cover is the length of the train and the length of the object as well. Now the denominator relative speed of speed, it depends on whether the two bodies are moving or only one body is moving. This has been discussed in detail in the concept class, so I'm not delving too much into this. Let's move to the next question. I'm going to the next question in the quiz. The next question is up in the quiz. It's up on your screen here as well. Great, let's see the status of the leaderboard at the end of this question. There's some change on the top. Let's see how we can approach this question. Okay, first I'm going to solve like I'm solving in an exam, then I'll explain to you in detail if required. In a kilometer race, A beats B by 30 seconds and B beats C by 15 seconds. The beating is given in terms of time. So I could just add this and say, a beats C by 30 plus 15, 45 seconds. And he also beats him by 180 meters, which means I can find speed of C. C was 180 meters behind and he will take 45 more seconds to cover that. So speed of C will be 180 by 45, that is 4 meters per second. The question is time taken by A to run 1 kilometer. Okay, first let me find out time taken by C to run 1 kilometer. A will take the, sorry, time taken by C to run 1 minus 180. That will be the same time that A will take to run 1 kilometer. So if the race is like this, if this is a 1 kilometer race, C is somewhere here, A is somewhere here. So they are separated by 180 meters. So C would have traveled 820 meters. Now the thing is, in the same time that C travels this 820, A would have traveled 
one kilometer. So if I just find out how much time C will take to travel 120, that is the same time that A will take to travel one kilometer. Let's find out that time taken for this for C will be 820 by speed of C4. They're all in terms of meters. This is 820 meters, speed in terms of meter per second. So I'm not going to worry about the units. So this is going to be 800. So 220 is another 5. So 205 seconds. In 205 seconds, C will go from starting point to 820 meters. At the same time, A would have traveled 1 kilometer. Answer is 205 for this question. Type 1 if everybody is clear with how we solved this question. Type R if you want me to repeat this at a slightly greater detail. Okay, one thing that uh, I want you guys to remember is whenever beating is given in terms of time, right? Whenever beating is given in terms of time, that is A beats B by 30 seconds and B beats C by 15 seconds. You can say A beats B by 45 seconds, but if it is given in terms of distance, keep in mind, you cannot add. For instance, if it is given like this, let's take this example, A beats B by 20 meters, B beats C by 30 meters. Now I cannot say A beats B by 20 plus 30, 50 meters. Sorry, A beats C by 20 plus 30, 50 meters. Now, this will not be valid. So keep this in mind, guys. In terms of distance, if beating is given, you cannot just add them up. But in terms of time, you can add them up. Okay, because what does it actually mean? Let's look at the time part once again. I'm going to just clear this off. But keep that in mind. In terms of distance, you cannot add things like this. So let me clear this and let's try to understand why are we able to do that in terms of time. So let's say, uh, the race started at time t is equal to 0. Race started at time t is equal to 0. When they say a beats b by 30 seconds, okay, it means at some time a has reached, okay, let's say ta is the time at which a has reached and tb will be time taken by a plus 30 seconds. That's what you mean by a beats B by 30 seconds. B will take 30 more seconds to reach the end point after A has reached. Now, if you look at time taken by C, C takes 15 more seconds than B. So that is TB plus 15. But we know TB is TA plus 30. So I can write this as TA plus 30 plus 15. So that is why you can add time if it is given in terms of time, if beating is given in terms of time, but in terms of distance, you cannot do that. Please keep that in mind. Please type 2 if you are clear with the two differences that we are discussing now. In terms of time, you can add. In terms of distance, you cannot. Is everyone clear with the differences? I'm just waiting for some responses from people who are there in the live session. Perfect. This has been discussed in the concept classes. So if you haven't gone through, please go through our videos of time and distance. You'll be able to understand. Let's move to the next question in the quiz. Well, he is chasing car B in his car. That's kind of implicit here.
Okay, let's see how we can solve this one and let's see the status of the leaderboard at the end of your attempts of this question. Okay, there is a considerable shift on the top. Okay, let's see how we can solve this one. Anupam drives his car at 60 meters per second. After he drives for some time, he finds some problem in the headlights of his car. So he stops and takes 35 seconds in changing the bulb of the headlight. Meanwhile, he notices that car B, which was 460 meters behind his car when he stopped his car, is now 240 meters ahead of his car. If Anupam starts chasing car B immediately after changing the bulb, how long? Okay. First, let's find out what is the speed of car B because in the 35 seconds, it was somewhat behind, but it went ahead. So what is the distance it covered in 35 seconds? Speed of car B will be the distance it covered in 35 seconds. That is, it was 460 meters behind, but it ended up 240 meters ahead. So 460 plus 240, that is a total of 700 meters. And it took how much time? Those 35 seconds. It took 35 seconds to cover that. So I can say speed of car B is 20 meters per Second. Now Anupam starts chasing car B immediately after changing the bulb. How long does it take for him to catch up with car B? Now when Anupam starts the chase, car B is already 240 meters ahead. So the distance between Anupam and car B when he starts the chase is 240 meters. And Anupam will be able to catch up because Anupam's speed is greater than speed of car B. So time taken is distance which is 240 meters by relative speed. Now they both are going in the same direction. So I should take difference of these speeds as relative speeds. And what is the difference of the speeds? 60 and 20. So it's going to be 40 meters per second. So 240 by 40, that's going to be 6 seconds. Answer is 6 seconds for this question. Please type 5 if everybody is clear with why we're going with option 5 for this question. If you want me to explain in detail, please don't hesitate to type D or R if you want me to repeat the explanation once again. Great. Uh, I'll just take a moment to remind you to like this video in case you are liking the way the video is going, in case you are liking the questions and the way we are discussing. Please do like the video and if you haven't subscribed, do subscribe to our uh, channel. You will get the notifications of the live sessions that we are going to do. We generally do around two to three live sessions every week. So you will start getting notifications for that. And do like the video in case you like what's happening. Let's move to the next question without uh, any more time waste. Great. The next question is up in the quiz. It's also up on your screen here.
Okay, let's see how we can solve this one. What is the status of the leaderboard at the end of this one? Okay, there is some shift on the top, I could notice. Let's see how we can solve this. The numbers expressing in meters, the lengths of two buses B1 and B2 are five times the numbers expressing in kilometer per hour, the speeds of both the buses respectively. The time taken by the two buses to pass each other when traveling in opposite direction. Okay, how do we do this one? Time taken for two buses to pass each other when traveling in opposite direction. So time taken is going to be sum of lengths by relative speed. In this case, we are going in opposite direction. So that should be sum of speeds. Okay. And lengths of the two buses is five times respectively the speeds of the two buses. So if the denominator is written as, let's say S1 plus S2, then the corresponding lengths will be five times S1 plus five times S2. But the point to be kept in mind is the units. So units for lens, it's in terms of meters. So this is in terms of meters. And for speeds, it's in terms of kilometer per hour. Length is in terms of meters. Speed is in terms of kilometer per hour. So this is kilometer per hour. So we will have to make sure we get the answers in terms of seconds because the options are in terms of seconds. So let's see how we can do that. Some shift of units is required. So I can take this 5 out. It becomes 5 times of S1 plus S2 meters. I can take this hours also on top into hours by S1 plus S2 in terms of kilometer. Now I can cancel this S1 plus S2, S1 plus S2. So I will get 5 meters hours by kilometer. Now I will have to first get rid of this meters and kilometers and then finally get my answer in terms of seconds. So I have kilometer in the denominator. If I convert into meter that will become 1000 meters. So that will get rid of meters for us. Now I will have to convert hours in terms of seconds. So hours in terms of minutes will be into 60. I can convert hours in terms of minutes. In terms of seconds will be another into 60. Now the expression is in terms of seconds. So let's simplify this and see what we will get in the end. So I can cancel 10 with 10 here, 10 with 10 here. And 5 I can cancel with 10, it will become 2. The 2 I can cancel with one of the 6s, that will become 3. So 3 into 6, 18 seconds should be the answer for this question. Type 2 if everybody is clear with how we got 18 as answer for this question. Perfect. Let's go to the next question, which is also the last question for today's discussion.
So let's see what is the status of the leaderboard at the end of your attempts of this question. Very good. Let us see how we can solve this question. Looks like a complicated question, but it's actually an application of two and promotion concepts that we have already learned. Let's first see what is given in the question. Two cities, Vaga and Anjuna, are along a straight line 150 km apart. A and B start at the same time from these two places respectively with speeds of 42 km per hour and 58 km per hour respectively. They travel towards each other and after they meet for the first time, they reverse directions and also interchange their speeds. After reaching their respective starting points, they reverse their directions and start proceeding towards each other. How much distance had B covered until the time he met for the second time? Okay, so let's first find for the first time, it's going to be easier. First time meeting, they are separated by a distance of 150 kilometers. Let's say A is starting from here and B is starting from the opposite direction. The time taken from the start till the first time is what we are trying to find out. They are separated by a distance of 150. So the distance, total distance that they have to cover is 150. And some of their speeds as they are going in opposite direction, you can even take relative speed in this case. So when you take a relative speed in this case, some of their speeds will be 42 plus 5800. That tells that they will take 1.5 hours to meet for the first time. So let's say they are meeting somewhere here. Now from there, they have met somewhere around the middle, they will have to go and then come back. Now the key point to notice here is the speed of the faster person is less than or equal to two times the speed of the slower person. As long as this condition is satisfied, whenever they have met somewhere in the middle, anywhere in between the two ending points, need not necessarily be the middle. For them to go and come back, the total distance they will have to travel will be two times of the track length. Now this is something we have discussed in detail in the concept class. As long as the faster guy is not more than two times the speed of the slower guy, then they will take a total of two times the lap length to come back and meet. So they will have to cover some total of 300 kilometers. So for the second meeting, if you have to travel, if I have to find out the time taken from the first meeting to second meeting, the distance that they have to travel is 300. And some of the speeds, they have interchanged their speeds, but some of the speeds will still remain 42 plus 58, right? So some of the speeds is going to be 100. Now at this point, you have to remember, we are not taking relative speed in the denominator because sometimes it's possible that these two guys are going in the same direction also, right? So what I'm doing is I'm taking some of the distances in the numerator and some of the speeds in the denominator. Keep in mind that numerator is not the distance by which they are separated. Right? Now, can we do something like this? Absolutely can. Because the time taken for these two guys is constant. Now, time taken for what? Time taken from the time they meet for the first time till the time they come and meet for the second time. So, whatever time B takes to go and come and whatever time A takes to go and come, the time is going to be constant. Right? Both of them are going to take the same amount of time. So, with that condition, I can take distance by speed as sum of the distances by sum of the speeds. That's what I'm doing here. Sum of the distances they have to cover is 300 and sum of the speeds is 100. That tells that they will take three hours to meet for the second time. From the first till the second, that interval is going to be three hours. Now, what is the question asking for? How much distance had B covered until the time he had met for the second time? Okay. For the first meeting, B speed was 58. So this will be 58 into the time taken for the first meeting, which is 1.5, which is 58 plus half of 58. That is 58 plus 29. That will come to 87 kilometers. So this time, in that time, he traveled 87 kilometers, basically 1.5 into the speed. Now for the next three hours, he is going to travel at A speed, that is 42. So 3 into 42, 126 kilometers. We'll have to add 87 and 126. So our answer should end in 3. There's only one answer ending in 3. That is the answer for this question. With that, we have come to the end of the discussion here. And uh, if you happen to like the video, the way the discussion is going, please do like this video and subscribe to our channel. You'll start getting notifications on the future uh, live sessions that we'll be doing. See you guys. Good night.